Welcome to learning English literature. A Friendship is an essay by Francis Bacon, an English philosopher and statesman. It explores the nature and value of friendship. Definition of friendship. Bacon defines friendship as a relationship between two individuals characterized by mutual affection, trust, and goodwill. He emphasizes the importance of sincerity and loyalty in a true friendship. Value of friendship. Bacon argues that friendship has immense value and is one of the most significant relationships in a person's life. He believes that true friendship brings joy, comfort, and support, making life more enjoyable and fulfilling. True Friends vs. False Friends Bacon distinguishes between true friends and false friends. He suggests that true friends are rare and hard to find, as they are trustworthy and genuinely care for each other. False friends, on the other hand, are merely interested in personal gain and do not exhibit genuine affection or loyalty. Benefits of Friendship Bacon outlines various benefits of friendship. He states that friends provide counsel and guidance, helping each other make wise decisions. They also share each other's burdens and alleviate the pains of life through companionship. Additionally, true friends rejoice in each other's successes and provide moral support during times of failure or hardship. Qualities of a good friend Bacon emphasizes several qualities that make someone a good friend. These include loyalty, trustworthiness, honesty, empathy, and the ability to provide constructive criticism when necessary. A good friend should be a source of comfort, support, and encouragement. Testing friendship Bacon discusses the importance of testing friendships to determine their authenticity. He suggests that true friendship withstands the test of time, adversity, and personal interests. In difficult times, true friends remain steadfast and supportive. Balancing Self-Interest and Friendship Bacon acknowledges that self-interest is an inherent part of human nature. However, he advises that true friendship should go beyond selfish motives and should be based on genuine care and concern for the other person. He encourages individuals to cultivate selflessness and prioritize the well-being of their friends. According to Francis Bacon, what is the defining characteristic of true friendship? A. Mutual affection and trust B. Similar interests and hobbies C. Financial benefits and material possessions D. Social status and popularity Correct answer. Mutual affection and trust. Bacon suggests that false friends are primarily motivated by A. Genuine care and concern B. Personal gain and self-interest C. Altruism and selflessness D. Intellectual stimulation and debate Correct answer. Personal gain and self-interest Bacon believes that true friendship provides all of the following benefits except A. Joy and comfort B. Guidance and counsel C. Shared burdens and support D. Solitude and isolation Correct answer. Solitude and isolation how does Bacon suggest testing the authenticity of a friendship? A. By observing the person's social status and popularity B. By evaluating the duration of the friendship C. By examining the person's ability to provide financial assistance D. By facing adversity and seeing if the friend remains supportive Correct answer. By facing adversity and seeing if the friend remains supportive. What quality does Bacon emphasize is essential for a good friend? A. Loyalty and trustworthiness B. Wealth and prosperity C. Intelligence and wit D. Physical attractiveness and charm Correct answer, loyalty and trustworthiness Important quotes, a principal fruit of friendship is the ease and discharge of the fullness and swellings of the heart, which passions of all kinds do cause and induce. Explanation This quote emphasizes that friendship provides emotional relief and helps alleviate the burdens of the heart. For friendship maketh indeed a fair day in the affections, from storm and tempests, but it maketh daylight in the understanding, out of darkness and confusion of thoughts. Explanation 
Pekin suggests that friendship brings clarity and understanding to one's thoughts and emotions, providing a sense of stability and peace. A man shall see faces, that if you examine them part by part, you shall find never a good, and yet altogether do well. Explanation This quote highlights the idea that true friendship goes beyond superficial appearances and focuses on the overall goodness and compatibility of individuals. For there is no such flatterer as is a man's self, and there is no such remedy against flattery of a man's self, as the liberty of a friend, Explanation Bacon emphasizes the role of a true friend in providing honest feedback and serving as a counterbalance to one's own self-flattery or biased perspectives. But it is not only the difficulty and labor which men take in finding out of truth, nor again that when it is found it imposeth upon men's thoughts, that doth bring lies in favor, but a natural though corrupt love of the lie itself. This quote discusses the importance of true friendship in pursuing truth and avoiding the allure of falsehoods and deceit. Metaphor A principal fruit of friendship is the ease and discharge of the fullness and swellings of the heart, which passions of all kinds do cause and induce. In this sentence, Friendship is compared to a fruit, highlighting its beneficial effect of relieving the emotions that can overwhelm the heart. Simile, for friendship maketh indeed a fair day in the affections, from storm and tempests, but it maketh daylight in the understanding, out of darkness and confusion of thoughts, the comparison of friendship to a fair day and daylight helps illustrate its role in bringing emotional calm and mental clarity. Personification, for there is no such flatterer as is a man's self, and there is no such remedy against flattery of a man's self, as the liberty of a friend. Here, Bacon personifies flattery, treating it as if it were a person, to emphasize the power of a friend in countering self-flattery. Hyperbole, but it is not only the difficulty and labor which men take in finding out of truth, nor again that when it is found it imposeth upon men's thoughts, that doth bring lies in favor, but a natural though corrupt love of the lie itself. The use of hyperbole is evident in the phrase, a natural though corrupt love of the lie itself, exaggerating the extent of people's inclination towards falsehood. Antithesis A man shall see faces, that if you examine them part by part, you shall find never a good, and yet altogether do well. This sentence presents an antithesis by contrasting the negative assessment of individual facial features with the positive overall impression of a person.